in many established gardens, we often have the problem of big trees, just like where I am. Huge, huge trees, which means lots of shade. And people often find that really challenging because you get two different types of soil that is under the shade trees. Either you're going to get dry shade or wet shade. Both of them prove equally quite challenging in order to plant and to maintain them. Because of course, this is part of your garden. You want to make it so that you can wander through here instead of just leaving it to the trees. Today I'm working in an area that is in deep shade. Firstly though, I'd like to put a pathway in that will give me access to the area. And then we finish off the garden with some plants that will do well in the setting. I know that you guys are always really excited to see what plants we're going to be putting in. But you know, one big mistake that we often make is we get so excited about our new gardens, we rush out, buy the plants, put them in, and then you think, well, maybe I should have put a pathway here, or maybe I need some steps. So you end up working around your garden plants, and invariably, nine times out of ten, you're going to mess them up. So first rule is always do your hard landscaping first. What it really means is put down all the bits that are not going to grow. That's just a general rule. So our hard landscaping is going to be our path. It's going to come from yonder and it's going to walk us way through under these gorgeous trees. And the way we need to start is as follows. I'm looking for George of the jungle. I don't know where he is. He's on his way. <laughs> Garth. As a tenure. Radio. Folks, to start off this, we're going to show you a very simple way to put this down. And really, it is dead easy. All you're going to need is a few strips of masonite. These are approximately 15 to 20 centimeters in in width and I know exactly where I want the path to go so all we do on the ground is put that down put down our masonite because remember this is going to form the edging of our pathway that we're going to be using we're going to be putting one on this side one on the other side and then we're going to be throwing our mix in the middle so that holds it all together stops it from kind of slopping all over once you've got your masonite in place. Then we've got our pegs. Garth, I think let's come along here. Okay. I'm happy with that. So we pop the first guy in. There's the baby. We pop one in here. So you're literally putting them almost diagonally opposite each other. Garth, we probably need one over there just for a bit of, yeah, bit of support. So it looks great. Right, Garth, our first one is in. Folks, now we need to put the second one in because we're creating the pathway and that's going to hold it all, create our framework that we're going to work in the middle of. Right folks, once we've got our two edges in, which are going to hold our mixture once we put it in here, we've got to have a start and a finish of our pathway. All you do is take a piece of timber, put that across the edge, just like that. Same principle, put the pegs in to keep it in place. Right, now we're good to go, done all our prep. So now all we've got to do is get our concrete mixture ready to put inside our framework. For making our concrete path today, it's a very simple ratio that we're following. It's two parts of river sand, one part of stone and one part cement. If you're using buckets to do your formula, one wheelbarrow load of concrete mix is not going to do your five metre pathway. But here's your measure, this is what you're going to use. On average, one wheelbarrow load of concrete mixture is going to do about one and a half metres of your pathway that is about 50 millimetres thick. Oh, Garth, this is great. Yes, Daniel, that's not runny. It's just what we're looking for. Absolutely. Now, this is your runny yogurt. This is not your Greek yogurt that we talk about, the extra thick stuff. This is kind of runny. Take a look at that. That's what we want because we are not creating the level first. You notice that when we put our edging in, we just simply took the contour of the land that we were working with. So, nice and runny, that's what we want from here. We take our wheelbarrow and bang it straight in to our boxing. Right, here comes George of the jungle <laughs> with our concrete mixture. 
Right, Garth, before you tip, yeah, boy. let's just tell the folks. Remember, we're starting from our end point. Ready, la, Mick, la. here it comes. Go for it, go for it, go for it. Thanks, Garth. Lovely stuff. Once your concrete mixture's in, all you do is you push it, feel its way in, and notice how, because it's a nice runny mixture, do you see how it's already just taking its levels? Using your float or your trowel, you then just start working it in. Once you've done that, it's got its levels, take a wooden float and you can then start working it in just to get it nice and smooth. Now that you've got your mixture on either side, holding your boards, pushing them to the outside of this peg, all you do now is remove this peg. So just pop them out, there we go, and then push your mixture into there, Bob's your uncle. And now it's just a matter of getting more of our concrete mixture to whack into our pathway, and then we'll show you the other tricks. Looking awesome. Do you see how easy that is? Now that we've done that, all we're going to do is leave it to just settle a little bit. But we've got the best part ahead of us. We're going to go and pick some leaves in the garden. We're going to pick them and we're going to show you how to use them in this, just to give your pathway the edge. So now we come to the fun part where we're going to be picking our leaves. Remember, we want ones with strong architectural lines, with beautiful veins, because that is going to form the imprint in our concrete mixture. Try and find ones that are well formed, that haven't got tears in them, because obviously that's going to come out as well. You know, it doesn't really matter if they even fall in leaves like this big guy. This is from a forest fever tree. Yes, it's a bit gnarled on the edges, but you know, that's all going to add to the character. But I mean, look at those awesome veins. That is going to be leave a gorgeous imprint. All right, folks, we armed with all our leaves and we've got a whole array of different kinds. And the idea is now is to take any leaf, like this is an anthurium leaf, and just for ease of use is just make your little stem a bit shorter. You could even take it off right there. Then you're going to take the little guy, you're going to put it down, and then you need to just push him gently onto the surface of your concrete mixture. And you'll find that as you've stuck it down, because of the moisture, it's almost going to form a little vacuum. So it's going to stay there. If you're worried about it peeling off when you turn your back, then just take a few little stones. Thank you, Garth. Yours is looking cool. And then just put them here because, you know, some of us are, you know, OCD and we stress about these things. But never mind, we won't go there. The whole point of this is to go wild. Put smaller leaves next to bigger leaves. Think about your pattern that you're going to do. We've got some two smaller ones there, so I'm going to go with a big oak over here. Nice big strelitzia leaf. Ooh. Remember to try and mould it down because you want it to make contact. You want the bottom of the leaf to take the shape of whatever the vein is. So folks, bottom line is, Garth and I are going to play around here for quite a while. We're going to be putting all sorts of different leaves. We've got a few cycas leaves, a couple of arum lilies, and we're just going to carry on playing around and uh, finishing this guy off. Right, folks, we've put down all the leaves. I'm really happy with the look. Now all we need to do is leave it for a day. We'll come back in a day's time and then we'll peel the leaves off and show you what the next step is. Right, folks, we've left our pathway to dry overnight. 
and it's time to take the leaves off. And all we're going to do now is just grab our leaf and gently remove it. Oh, look at that. And here you got the imprint. Garth, come and give me a hand. Okay. This is the most exciting part. Almost like when you find fossilized leaves in nature. That's the plan. That is exactly what we wanted. Oh, baby. Lovely. And look at that beautiful, beautiful imprint that you're getting there. That's the plan. That is exactly what we wanted. Gorgeous. Can't wait to see what this guy has done. Now that we've taken the leaves off, we're going to start by taking off the edge of the boxing that we used and just pulling out the pegs, peg on either side, and then this will just remove and slip away as easy as that. Right, so now the next step that we're going to do is we're going to stain the imprint of the leaf and the area around it. I've got an awesome green stain. This is a green concrete stain that you can get from your local hardware store. Believe it or not, this blue, when it dries, is going to turn vivid, vivid green. Garth's got a yellow and he's going to paint the area around the leaves. So it's pretty simple, folks. Don't get too worried about if you're going a little bit out of it. You just take it and you whack it on. Even if the two mix into each other a bit, that's also fine. So you're going to paint the entire leaf area. You're going to go around. The more you put on, well, the darker green it's going to be. And the trick here is, I don't want it to be like all perfect. So I want Garth to go wild, Garth. Different strokes and take it that way a bit. Yeah, like yeah. a brownie yellow. Mm. Wicked. The concrete stain will need a bit of time to settle before the true colours come through. Years and years of the leaves falling over here, I'm ending up with this beautiful mulch. Now, as you start digging the hole, keep it. Don't lose this stuff. Just put it aside. Of course, you still want to make sure that you are going to be putting in some compost into the soil that you removed. So let's mix some of the soil that we removed with it. Good handful of bone meal into the planting hole. And then my coleus is going to be so happy. Pop him in here. Oh, doesn't that look gorgeous? Look at those colors. And then fill him around. And then all that gorgeous mulch that we put aside, well, you're gonna take that you're just going to spread it around the plant to make sure that he stays nice and snug and all this good compost will carry on and the whole process will continue. Lovely plant, beautiful textures and of course in a deep shady area like this a bit of contrast in the variegation is always great because it just lifts it. Now for a bit of gorgeous contrast I've got these lovely ajugas, lovely ground cover. It grows really quickly loves being in the semi-shade and it's just going to creep along here and do its thing. When a juga starts flowering, I suggest strongly that you cut the flowers off and it might sound a bit odd, but really as soon as this little guy starts producing flowers, what happens is all of the energy is going into the flowers and you start losing the gorgeous quality of the foliage. And at the end of the day, you want this plant for the foliage, not for the flower. So that's one thing to remember. Always keep an eye on them in your garden. As soon as you think they're going to start flowering or sending up a spike, just nip them off. And no, you'll get over it. Remember, you'll always have beautiful, beautiful leaves. And it's the contrast that we planted them for.